I gave a letter to the postman He put it in this sack Bright and early next morning He brought my letter back Return to sender I'm a dress unknown Puterea alimenta Romei. Când îți iubești părul, faci totul ca să eviți asta. Toreal inventează Elsev antirupere cu omega ceramide pentru o dublă reparare. La exterior reface suprafața până la vârfuri. În interior reconstruiește fibra capilară. Rezultat cu până la 95% mai puțin păr la periaj. Nu, Elsev antirupere de la L'Oreal cu omega ceramide pentru o reparare internă plus externă. Pentru că meritați! Decât să cumpere 1500 de bomboane și să nu te alegi cu nimic, mai bine ți un laptop Packard Benizinot cu procesor Intel Core 2, ecran lat cu tehnologie Diamond View și cititor de carduri la numai 2949,9 lei. Ultra Pro Computers, ultra bun în calculatoare. Cine caută, găsește jumătatea de bancnotă potrivită în alte pungi de Cio Chips. 10.400 de bancnote te așteaptă să le potrivești în pungile de Cio Chips și să câștigi bani adevărați de distracție. Cumpără un seat și poți câștiga o excursie de două persoane la concertul Shakira din 5 martie de la Budapesta. Consumul excesiv de alcool dăunează grav sănătății. The worst has happened. Now using survivor testimonies, inquiry evidence and advanced computer simulation, we turn back time and piece together the causes of some of the world's most devastating disasters. A brand new series of Seconds from Disaster. Tonight at 11 on National Geographic Channel. If the New York mob wanted to know what a mafia war was like, they needed to look no further than Sicily. Here the mafia's boss was Toto Reina, an elusive psychopathic killer from the town of Corleone. Corleone was a mafia stronghold set high in the mountains of central Sicily. It was the place that gave its name to Marlon Brando's character in the film The Godfather. Rihanna's cruelty earned him the name The Beast. Corleone had an unenviable reputation as a place where only the toughest mafiosi were born and bred, as one local anti-mafia fighter remembers. I once met a Corleone Mafia person and he looked me straight in the eye and said, listen, to be a real man you need to have spent a few years in jail. This is the philosophy of the Corleone Mafia. For them, going to jail is like a baptism. A Mafia member who hasn't been to jail isn't a real mafioso. Riena's crime family had seized control of the Mafia 
in a vicious war. In Palermo in the early 80s, the streets were awash with the blood of Riina's victims. During one six-month period, a body was found in the city every three days. Palermo's mayor was Leo Luca Orlando, elected to office promising to end such crimes. Even 20 years later, his courageous stand means he must have an armed guard 24 hours a day. Palermo was a city just living in silence and in dark. The way the citizens to avoid to be involved in these killings was to deny that the mafia uh, does exist. Just to say, we don't see, we don't speak, we don't hear. It's not our problem. They kill each other. There's no risk for us. If we don't speak about the mafia, we will, we will never be killed. The man leading the hunt for Regina was an investigating magistrate called Judge Giovanni Falcone. He had grown up in a rough area of Palermo, where some of his schoolboy friends later became mafiosi. Unlike them, he had chosen to fight for the law rather than against it. From his headquarters in Palermo's Palace of Justice, Falcone had been battling the mafia for over a decade. In 1987, he had enjoyed his greatest moment. In the Maxi trial, over 300 mafiosi had been sent to prison, their sentences totaling almost 3,000 years. It was the most stunning blow the Sicilian Mafia had ever received. But Mafia boss Toto Riina had escaped the roundup. He remained free, running his criminal empire from an unknown hiding place. Falcone faced another danger, this one closer to home. He had few friends at the Palace of Justice. The people of Palermo stood on the sidelines, waiting to see who would come out on top, Falcone or the Mafia. Such isolation was dangerous. Other anti-Mafia fighters had met their deaths at the hands of Reina. Falcone could not be too careful. When he married his fiancée, Francesca, Falcone had Mayor Orlando himself conduct the ceremony. It was held in total secrecy, late on a Saturday evening, to the astonishment of Orlando's secretary. Suddenly, my secretary came and said, Judge Falcone is arriving. And I said, yes, let's start with the wedding. And uh, they got married, there was no one, and they went away without photo, without uh, friends, uh, without uh, members of family. It was uh, one of the costs that Giovanni and Francesca had to pay to the fight against uh, the Mafia. A few years earlier, Mafia defector Tommaso Buscetta warned Falcone that Riina would stop at nothing to kill him. Never forget, when you open an account with the Mafia, it will only be settled when you die. Falcone spoke to one of his closest friends in the fight against the Mafia. He made a chilling prediction. When we were talking afterwards, he told me, my life's mapped out. It's my destiny to be killed by the Mafia someday. The only thing I don't know 